Alright, what's up guys? Simon from BraveBest.com. If you watched my last video, you saw that we used the I2C port expander module to save pins on an Arduino when connecting a Borns encoder. So today we're gonna check another use for the I2C port expander and also talk a little bit about the I2C protocol. Now, before we get into that, I wanna talk about these two boards here. This is the I2C port expander that we used. This is a regular LCD backpack that you use to connect an LCD using I2C. Now, at the heart of both of these is the same chip. It's the PCF8574. So these two boards basically do the same thing. Now, I didn't have one of these at first, so I said, can I use this as a port expander since it's exactly the same as this? The big difference is that the pinout is different. The pinout here is made to fit on an LCD. So the pins are all over the place. This one is very easy. It's 0, 1, 2, and so on. So I needed to find a pinout. So I used a multimeter on this guy to find which pin here goes to which pin here. Now I found all the pins except the third one. The third one is not connected anywhere. That's because on an LCD, they don't make use of the third one. It starts at the fourth one. So you can't really use this if you need all eight input and outputs. But if you need less, maybe this could work. So check out my website. I have the pin out there if you want to give that a try. So today we're going to use this guy. And we're going to use it to connect a regular keypad. Now keypads, we use them a lot in project. We need them. The problem with keypads is that they need a lot of pins. There's a lot of ways to connect them to save some pins. But using a little board like this makes it very easy to actually use only two pins to connect this and this at the same time. And that's what we're going to look at today. So there you go guys, that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit about the I2C protocol. Then we're going to check out the code that we're going to use today. We're going to test it out. And of course, we'll be right back. All right, so this is going to be a quick overview of how the I2C protocol works. Now, this is by no means in detail. This is very basic stuff. So if you want more information, you can go on Google. There's a lot of information out there. All right, so the I2C bus uses two wires, the uh, serial data and serial clock, so SDA and SCL. You can see those pins on all the I2C module. So when you use an Arduino with I2C, it will be considered the master and the connected modules will be considered slaves. Each I2C module need a unique address. So let's say this one is 20, this one's 27, that's fine, they're not the same. And the Arduino will use this address to decide which module it wants to communicate with. Now, you have the Arduino, which is the master, and it will generate the clock signal, the SCL, sends the I2C commands, and starts or stops the communication. Now, you can have multiple Arduinos acting as masters and communicate with the same uh, module, but they can't do it at the same time. Okay, so the communication goes something like this. So you have your Arduino, it's connected to an I2C module. The communications from the Arduino will be in blue and from the module will be in red. So the first scenario we're going to look at is write or send data to a module. So at the beginning, the Arduino starts the communication, decides which address it wants to send it to, then says it's a write operation. Then it gets an acknowledge from the module, okay, I'm ready. And then the data is sent by the Arduino, gets an acknowledge from the module, more data is sent to the module and so on and so on until the Arduino stops the communication. Now the other scenario is a read or get data from the module. It's kind of like the same thing but it switches around a little bit. So start at the beginning, the address, it's a read, gets the acknowledge from the module that it's ready, and then the data is sent by the module. And then after that the acknowledge is from the Arduino instead and so on and so on. So data from the module, acknowledge from the Arduino, and then the Arduino stops the communication again. Now, the read and the acknowledge is one bit, and the data is eight bit. So every time you send data or receive data, you're using nine bits. So you, you're losing or adding a bit of information every time. And that's why I2C has a little bit of overhead, but it's not too bad. Now, one last thing is that all Arduinos have fixed pins for I2C communication. These pins are different depending on the models you're using. So, for example, the Uno and the Nano, uh, the A4 and A5 pins are the I2C pins, and the Mega pin 20 and 21. So, you have to check the model of your Arduino and determine 
which pins are using the I2C protocol. So there you go. That's a quick, quick overview of how it works. Like I said, there's way more information than this, but it should get you started. So now let's go back and continue. All right, so let's have a quick look at the code we're going to use today. I'm including two libraries at the beginning, the keypad underscore I2C and the liquid crystal I2C. This one we saw in the last video. It's when you're using an LCD backpack with an LCD to control it uh, via I2C. And the keypad I2C was created uh, to connect a keypad to an I2C expander. So that's what we're using today. Now the address for each one is here. So the backpack always has, well, most of the time 27 and the I2C expander with the A0, A1 and A2 dip switch down or off as an address of 20. These two needs to be, uh, need to be different. Uh, here are the LCD pin that are connected to the backpack. These normally, if you have an HD 4480 LCD controller, uh, these should be always the same. Then we're defining the LCD. And here, the keypad pins. So the keypad we're using today is a four by three. So the rows, there's four rows and three columns. And the numbers are this way on the keypad. And here we're defining which pin on the I2C expander is connected to which row or column. So these are the P0, P1, P2, P3 that is on the I2C expander. Then we create an instance of the keypad using all that information here and telling it that the I2C expander we're using has the PCF8574 chip on it. Then in the setup, we're, uh, we're using a 16 by two LCD. We're turning on the backlight, clearing the LCD at the beginning and starting the keypad. And now we get to the main loop. So key will be equal to I2C keypad dot get key. So every time we press a key on the keypad, key will have that information. And then we do a simple switch case, depending on which number we are pressing to light up on the LCD and print the results right here. So one, two, three up to uh, the uh, number sign will be displayed on the LCD. And when we press the star sign, this will clear the LCD so we can start over again. And there you go, that's the whole code. So I'm gonna upload that and let's go test it out. All right, so I already uploaded the code to the Uno right here. As you can see, we only have two pins connected to both control the LCD and the keypad, which is connected to the little I2C expander here. So let me plug it in and see how it works. All right, the LCD is cleared, so I'm gonna start pressing on the keypad and the numbers are lighting up. Let me try to get all of them. There we go, and clear, and start over. So there you go, it's, it's great because keypads are being used in a lot of projects, but they do use a lot of pins normally. But if you use the I2C protocol with the I2C expander, as you can see, only two pins, and I'm controlling the LCD and the keypad. So I have all these other pins available for other stuff. So hopefully this was helpful. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do it for today, guys. Don't forget, if you want more information about this tutorial and all the tutorials that I do on YouTube, you can check out my website. I always create a web page there with links to the library used. You can get a copy of the code and more information. So I invite you guys to check that out. And as always, if you like my videos, please share, subscribe, like, all that cool stuff. And uh, yeah, so that'll do it for me. And as always, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.